Hello friends, you are about to see a video of a man named Carl Sandberg, born in 1878, and he has quite a fascinating story to tell you about witnessing a political rally in October of 1884. This was a few weeks before the election that made Grover Cleveland the 22nd President of the United States. Now some of you may have heard of Carl Sandburg before, he was a well-known poet and biographer in the first half of the 20th century, and he lived in a small town called Galesburg, Illinois, which is where the political rally that he speaks of took place. At that time, in the 1880s, Illinois was predominantly Republican, and so you'll hear Mr. Sandburg describe how the crowd at the rally was mostly chanting for a man named James G. Blaine the Republican nominee for the presidency at the time. The 1884 presidential election was highly contentious and marked by strong hostility toward both candidates. Cleveland faced accusations of fathering an illegitimate child, while James G. Blaine received backlash over the Mulligan letters, documents indicating that he had accepted a bribe from the Union Pacific Railroad. Despite these controversies, Cleveland would ascend to the presidency, thanks to a narrow win in his home state of New York by just 1,149 votes. And here is a map of the final election results for that year, where President Cleveland proved victorious in all the South and most of the East, whereas Mr. Blaine was heavily favored in the West and Midwest. And so now let us walk through the doors of time and listen to Mr. Sandberg's amazing recollection of that night back in October of 1884. What was it like growing up in central Illinois before there were any automobiles? Well, one thing a man thinks of, first of all, is horses, horses, everywhere, horses. And a man can think of how uh, politics then was about the same as now. Just as much shenanigans as ever. Mm -hmm. In, uh, I was six years old in October of 1884 when my father took me downtown to see a Republican torchlight procession. This is in Galesburg. Yes. Hundreds of Republicans, each one with a lighted torch on his shoulder. And a flambeau corps. Pipes, long pipes that blow, and there would be three, four feet of fire up there, a kind of a big fire flower. All at once, 16 of them shooting up in the air. It was a wonder to my boy eye. And uh, they would march sometimes, Blaine, Blaine, James G. Blaine. My father had told me that was the candidate of the Republican Party. But uh, while they were marching, every once in a while there would come from a sidewalk a hurrah for Cleveland. And then from the procession there would come and a rope to hang them. And you know, uh, I was a nice little six-year-old Republican. I had never seen a hanging. I didn't know what hanging was like. But uh, if the Republicans were for it, I was like my father. I was a Republican, and I was for the hanging of Grover Cleveland. But a few weeks pass, and uh, the country elected Grover Cleveland. Instead of hanging him, they elected him president of the United States. And he appoints for a postmaster in Galesburg, a neighbor of ours, only two weeks, only two blocks away, a, a, an Irishman named Billy Tuick. Politics was as full of changes and surprises then as it is now. 